Hey guys, and say James back again today. Got a few more exercises and drills you guys can work on at home, either inside or outside. Unfortunately, we still can't be in the dojo working out with our judo and BJJ the way we want to. But like I said in that previous video, it's important we stay busy, we stay active, we keep making ourselves stronger and, uh, and, and just better as much as we can, uh, even while we can't be in the dojo. Uh, so I've got a few different solo drills or exercises for you today. Again, these are just to help give you some ideas, maybe things you had forgotten about, or maybe hadn't thought about. Any of the uh, drills and warm-ups that we do in class that you could do without a partner, see if you can find a way to modify those uh, to be able to do them at home by yourself or if you have a sibling or mom or dad or someone like that that can help you out, maybe uh, ask them to help you. Try to get that at least 30 minutes a day workout in, if at all possible. Uh, so, you know, balance is super important in judo, particularly being able to balance on one leg. Uh, that's why we sometimes do our pogo battle game. A lot of our judo throws are going to happen uh, on one leg or they may start on two and then finish on one. So it's important that we're able to, uh, to have good, strong balance and power on a single leg. Um, so one thing I'm going to show you today is uh, just kind of a solo uchi komi or a solo setup for our, one of our throws called Uchi Mata. Not one of our semester throws this semester, but we have done it before and we will do it again. Um, this same motion also is uh, very similar in Osoto Gari, Harai Goshi, a lot of other throwing techniques that we see. We finish with a strong leg sweep or reaping action. Um, so what I'm going to simply do is just find a good strong wall or a corner to lean against and then I'll stand on one leg and the other leg and lift, point the toes and I want to really get that leg up as high as I can in the back. Uh, pointing the toes, imagining I'm lifting, I'm reaping or sweeping my opponent up into the air. So maybe I'm going to lean right here against this wall, get myself ready, stand on my left foot, take my right foot and then up as far as I can. Five. And remember, try and get both sides as much as possible. We want to try and get both sides, not just one. So now I'll stand on the right foot and one, two, three, four, and five. Just like that. Of course, you more advanced uh, judoka with better balance. You could practice this just with a, an invisible partner here. I've got my grip, my right foot steps to the center, my body pivots beside them. My left foot comes in and up we go, or here, 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 and right foot. Of course, we've also worked on pivot, hop, and reaping with the inside leg. So any of those type of motions would help us to work on our Uchi model. We could do it against a wall, we could do it with a coffee table or end table or with the couch. Uh, for the kids, I have a challenge for you guys. I want to see how long you can balance on each leg by itself. So like in our pogo battle scenario, let's stand on one leg, let's take the other leg, let's grab it with one hand, let's lift it up, other arm right here beside us. I want to see how long you guys can balance on your left leg and then see how long you can balance on your right leg. So right leg down now, left leg up, and I'll hold it. So get mom or dad or brother or sister, grandma or grandpa, get someone to time it for you. And it doesn't really matter if you don't have the, the highest time of anybody else that sends their video in. What I'd like to see is how long you do it the very first time you start, the very first time you try, versus the very last time you do it. See if you can show some improvement. Maybe it's only five seconds when you start, but maybe you keep practicing, you keep working on it, and then maybe the next time it's six seconds, and then eight seconds, and then before you know it, you're on one leg for 15, 20, 30, 45 seconds. So I want you guys to work on that. I want to see that video. I want you guys to send it in to me at the uh, at the wall to wall Facebook page and uh, parents if you want me to share it on our page with everybody let me know and I'll do that but if not just send it to me uh, personally as a private message and it's a uh, individual message and then I can give you guys a shout out or some recognition on our Facebook page okay I got another solo exercise here this one is not so much for a specific judo technique as it is to help us with grip strength in our hands and our forearms and, uh, and everything. Gripping is incredibly important in judo and in jiu-jitsu, whether we're doing stand-up work or we're doing ground work. So this is real simple here. Uh, all that you will need is going to be 
uh, like a broom handle, a mop handle, or some other type of, of short stick. It doesn't have to be as long as this. I just happen to have a broom handy, so I grabbed it. And I've taken a piece of twine or string, and I've tied around it, and I've went ahead and started the first couple of turns on it. In this case, I've taken a 10-pound dumbbell. Doesn't have to be this heavy. Doesn't have to be a dumbbell. It could be a weight plate, like a round uh, barbell plate. Uh, it could be a brick in your front yard or backyard. It could be uh, just about anything uh, that you want to use. It's got some weight to it. And I've just tied the other end of the string around it. And I'm going to just sit it down here on the floor. And then what I'm just simply going to do is, uh, is lift it up, hold it out, and then I'll let me get a few turns started on my string here. Hold on. Let's turn it a few times, take it up. And now what I'm going to do is simply start to turn it with my hands. So I'm using one hand, and then the other. I'm rolling forward so that I am causing the weight to rise up higher. And once I make it all the way to the top, then I will need to go the other direction. So we roll, and roll, and roll, and roll. And this seems like it'd be very easy, but on the way down, remember to go slow, one hand at a time. Don't let it drop. Don't let it fall. Obviously, make sure this is not right over your toes or your feet. We don't want you to hurt yourself, okay? And you're going to find that this simple exercise, if you do it a few times, man, your wrists, your hands, your forearms, this is all going to really start to get fatigued and tired. This is an excellent, simple, basic exercise that you can do at home with uh, objects that are pretty much readily available anywhere. You can go into the yard, get a, a nice hefty stick, get mom or dad or someone to help you out with a piece of string. Uh, it doesn't have to be very long, maybe a foot, foot and a half long. Get it tied around nice and tight, roll it forward then roll it back. Do that a couple times each day and you're gonna, you're gonna be surprised how much fatigue you start to feel. But this is an excellent exercise, one I used to do all the time uh, when I trained to compete a lot. Still do it from time to time now, not as often as I used to, but uh, it will build some really great gripping strength for you. Okay guys, we're gonna have a little solo drill or exercise here uh, that you guys can do at home by yourself pretty easily. Uh, all I've got here is just a resistance band, just a rubber strap. Uh, this one is not a particularly uh, powerful one. It's not super, super, super strong, uh, but it'll do for demonstration purposes. Uh, if you don't have one of these, uh, you can pick them up usually at Walmart or Academy Sports, and uh, those places are still open right now uh, pretty inexpensively. Uh, another thing that works in place of resistance band would be like the inner tube out of a bicycle. If you have a little bicycle tire with mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, feel comfortable taking out that inner tube and cutting it in half for you. You can use that. Uh, in this case, the one I've got here has a little attachment on it that has kind of a hard object at the end there so I can close it in the top of a door. If you didn't have that, you could just take a regular resistance band or inner tube and you could just tie that in it, just like that. And that would serve the same purpose. I can just take this knot, I can just place it over the top of the door frame and close it and then that will hold it just fine for me. Um, so we use this to practice a variety of our judo throwing techniques, anything that requires us to pull forward. In this case, we're going to look specifically at one of our semester throws, Sode Surikone Goshi, lifting, pulling, hip throw. With that technique, we held the sleeve with our left hand, and our right hand went underneath and grabbed the sleeve of their other arm, and we lifted their arm up, and we rotated, bent, and then threw forward. So I'm going to use this to try to sort of mimic that motion. It may not be exactly the same, but it'll be very, very, very similar. So I've got one of their sleeves here, got their other sleeve here. So I'm going to drive that sleeve up, turn, and a big pull forward. And then I'll reset. So I'll lift up, step in. We're going to remember feet about shoulder width apart, bend in my knees, and then I'm going to pull them forward. Big pull. Big pull. Big pull, it's the lift, pull, foot prop, I'm oh, sorry, lift, pull, hip throw. So, boom, boom, boom. Sleeve, lifting, pulling, hip throw. So, a Suri Kami Goshi. Right there, just like that. All right, so find a way to make it work at home. Use something you've got. If you don't have a resistance band, again, old bicycle or two works great. Anything you can do to stay busy, 
get some work in, guys. Uh, we're back in the dojo just as soon as we can. All right, until then, stay busy.